Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong joined the debate on the President's address this afternoon. His wide-ranging speech started with a look back on the progress that was made in the first half of the Parliament session before moving on to laying out the agenda for the rest of the term. Mr Lee also devoted a major part of his speech on constructive politics, a recurring theme in many MP speeches over the last three days of the debate. Now we'll have the full reports on News 5. First, the government says it has made steady progress in the areas of housing, transport, population issues, as well as in strengthening social safety nets for Singaporeans. Prime Minister Lee said the goal has been to develop a fair and inclusive society where every citizen has the opportunity to fulfil their aspirations. Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong said Parliament had opened in 2011 with housing as a big concern and the government had mobilised all its resources to tackle the issue. This included building 52,000 flats, which is about two Clementi Newtowns worth of HDB flats. He said a key focus had been to keep flats affordable for Singaporeans and the children's generation, as HDB home ownership is not just about providing roofs over their heads, but to give everyone a stake in the country. On transport, Mr Lee said there will be more buses and routes as part of the bus service enhancement programme. He acknowledged that improving train services was still a work in progress, but said the government can and will solve the problem. He said free early morning rides have helped spread out peak hour traffic, but trains are still crowded during those periods. Mr Lee said there are major plans unfolding in this area, with new trains coming in and in the upgrading of signalling equipment, and that commuters can expect significant improvements from next year. The aim, he said, is to build a first-class public transport system for Singapore so that people can get around comfortably, efficiently and affordably without having to own a car. Mr Lee said the government has spent large sums in improving the system and will continue to subsidise public transport so that it's viable even as it improves. But commuters too must pay their share. And in the end, he said it's about finding the right balance in cost sharing between the government, the private sector and commuters. On population, he recounted a vigorous and emotional debate on the population white paper last year. Mr Lee said the government has slowed the inflow of foreign workers considerably, with numbers of such workers almost halved since 2011. But this slowdown has been painful for companies, especially small and medium enterprises or SMEs. When we had the debate, the opposition proposed that we go for 0% growth of foreign workers and maintain that this was a good thing and popular. It's a good thing we didn't do that, because if we had done that, many more SMEs would have been hurt and many more Singaporeans would have lost their jobs. Mr Lee said the government would not ease up on the foreign worker limits, but would help companies adapt to having fewer foreign workers. He said the numbers of construction workers in Singapore has also been tightened through reducing quotas while raising levies. To spread out the demand for construction workers, Mr Lee said the government would go full steam ahead for urgent projects such as building more flats and the train network, but defer some $2 billion worth of projects in the pipeline. The deferred projects include new ministry and statutory board offices, the new science centre and extensions to gardens by the bay. On the future, Mr Lee said Singapore must be a place where the economy prospers and the human spirit thrives. And he outlined how the government plans to fulfil its vision of a fair and inclusive society where every citizen has a rightful place and the opportunity to fulfil their aspirations. Sharing the fruits of progress more widely and strengthening social safety nets. Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong said the Singapore government has been doing this for many years in the areas of education, health care and housing, and he gave the assurance they will continue to do so. One major safety net, Mr Lee said, is MediShield Life, which will be an improvement over the current basic medical insurance scheme. As MediShield Life is a complex undertaking, Mr Lee said he has reinforced the health ministry to ensure the government gets many important details right. Apart from health care, Mr Lee said the government is also looking at aspects of retirement adequacy, 
He outlined several ways to achieve this, including allowing Singaporeans to work beyond 65. Authorities are also looking at how to improve schemes that can help Singaporeans unlock the value in their flats. There could be enhancements to the national annuity scheme known as CPF Life so that payouts can keep pace with the cost of living in Singapore. Mr Lee said strengthening Singapore's social safety nets is the right thing to do, but this must be done carefully. It's human nature to want more without wanting to pay more for it. And also we are going against the tide. We are increasing our social spending precisely at the time when many other countries in the world, developed countries, are trying to cut theirs. We believe we need to improve our system, but I think we should not forget that, in fact, a lot of things are working in our system, and as we try to improve it, let us not break the things which are important and which work well for us. Beyond social safety nets, Mr Lee said the best way to improve lives is to keep pathways upwards open to all by giving every child a good education and giving every Singaporean opportunities to do well in life. This means helping talented students from humble backgrounds to make the best choice for their education and ensuring schools do not become closed institutions. And at the workplace, more opportunities for Singaporeans to pick up new skills. We have to be an open and egalitarian society. You must not have rigid hierarchies or class distinctions. People must be able to interact comfortably up and down the social ladder. Comfortably, self-confidently, without obsequious scraping and bowing. You may be the Prime Minister, you may be a cleaner, you may be a teacher, you may be the student's parent. We are all Singaporeans together. We treat each other with respect. There's an informality, an easy camaraderie. He said it's not possible to be a completely classless society, but those in positions of responsibility must also remember their duty to the rest. Mr Lee added there is much work ahead in transforming Singapore's economy, and he urged Singaporeans to have the ambition and drive to make Singapore a city where every citizen can lead a fulfilling life.